anybody can have a vegetable garden. It doesn't have to be a great big thing. But what you do have to have is you have to have a location. And that location has to be full sun, good drainage, rich soil, and it can be along the front of a flower bed. It can be along the driveway, the sidewalk. It can be any kind of container. But everybody can have a garden no matter what. You can raise your own. And when you taste your first vegetable from your garden, whoo, boy, that just sends you off and going. Now, the size of the garden will depend on how many of you that you're, that you're growing product for. For instance, a couple, uh, two or three, then that would be a 10 by 10. If it's uh, three to, to six, then it would be 15 by 15. And for six or more, it will be a 30 by 30. That's a pretty good sized garden chunk to bite off. And so you want to you want to make your plan. And that's what's important. The man with a plan will win. If you don't have a plan, you're going to have a mess on your hands. When I say a plan, just take and cut the back off of a grocery bag, set it down, put north in the direction of north. Now draw as close to scale as you possibly can the garden plot, whatever it is. And then you're going to draw in <clears throat> the, the different size uh, the, where you're going to put different product and for instance you will always put on the, the west side you will put your corn or your sunflower seeds the tall stuff and then it tapers on down coming to the, the east will be your vining crops that will be your cucumbers and your squashes because they always grow to the morning sun you don't want everything competing with everything else and then they're going to have a fight and then you're going to be so busy settling fights that you won't get the job done now the garden should uh, never be empty. Once you plant your garden, once you plant it, and then you start your planting, and that's what you want to do. That's why you have to have a plan, because you have to mark out and put your secondary plants in and your third. Once you have one crop has come out, now you're going to rotate and put another crop in so that you never have an empty space. And for instance, you can have them from the beginning of a growing season to the end, no matter where you live. For instance, uh, up in the, in the northern tier where it's really cold, the first opportunity you have when the weather is just right and the frost is gone and everything, then you're going to go in with most of your below the ground crops. You come to the middle section of the country, you're going to go with row crops and some of the, the cabbage or the leaf crops. And in the lower portion, pretty much it's going to run all year long and you're going to rotate and your garden is going to be running all year long. That's what it's really all about. But remember, the man with a plan. So plan before you plant and you will harvest a bounty. Woo, it will be absolutely delicious. You want me to wait for seed to sprout, then I'm gonna germinate it, and then I'm gonna transplant it are you kidding at my age? I don't even buy green bananas. That's what a friend of mine said when I suggested that he start his own vegetable seeds. Well, folks, if you start your own vegetable seeds from scratch, you're going to save a lot of money. You're going to save time. On top of that, it'll give you something to do on the gray days of winter. And you'll know that they're fresh. And you'll know that they're not good, that they're going to get off to a growing head start. Now, why do that? Well, I just said you save money. But you've got to buy fresh seed. And on the back of every packet, it will give you the date that it was that this was packed. So you make sure that you get one with this year's thing on, because you'll see bargains out there, and they'll be a year, two years old. Maybe they will germinate, maybe they won't. Now, refrigerate them. As soon as you get them home, just stick the packets into the refrigerator and leave them there so that they uh, can, can get fooled. That's right. We'll fool them into thinking that they've been through a winter or something. They've been through a whole year. Now, you've got to keep your hands clean. You've got to keep your pots clean. You've got to keep the equipment clean. You've got to keep absolutely everything clean. What you're going to use there is uh, ordinary bleach and liquid dish soap. And we'll do a teaspoon to the quart for each one of them. And then your hands will be really clean. Now, how do you determine uh, the quantity of the seeds, uh, the, the quality of the seeds and how they end up. Well, you do that by washing your hands and all of your equipment. And before you plant your seeds, I want you to start out by taking your seeds and put them in a piece of cheesecloth and put them down in a weak solution of tea. The tannic acid will soften the shell and help them off to go. Okay, now our hands are all clean, our equipment's all clean, everything is clean. Now we're going to start and we're going to go step by step. 
you're going to add two tablespoons of Epsom salts, two tablespoons of Epsom salts to um, professional mix. And the professional mix will be, I, I'm going to use it to a peck. That's easy for you to understand. I use professional mix because it is non-contaminated. You're starting out with clean mixture and it has all of the things that you need. Once you do, you've put the Epsom salts in, mixed up, then I want you to use uh, a weak solution of tea and I want you to mist spray it really, really good. Not soak it, I don't want it soaking wet. Then put it into your uh, styrofoam cup. You take a pencil and you poke a hole with the pencil in big enough to put your seed, whatever it is. And now you're going to take your tweezers. Yes, tweezers. I don't want to touch them. I've just I've done, gone to all this trouble. I take the seed and I put it down into the hole. I use my thumb to press it down. And now I'm going to mist it with two drops of liquid dish soap, two drops of ammonia, two drops of ammonia, and one drop of whiskey. And I'm going to mist spray the foliage and it's stamped. Now it's ready to go into the container to help it germinate. I'm going to put it into a container that I can cover up with a towel into which I have also sprayed with the same solution to keep it damp. I'm going to put it in the dark for four days. I'm going to keep this mist sprayed and I have to keep it where it's a warm room. Now if you're in that's between 68 and 72 degrees, if you can't do it then set this tray on top of a, of a heating pad. As a matter of fact, you can use a hot water bottle and before they go to bed, put it on that, wake up in the morning, put another one on, it'll be fine. On the sixth day, you will place the plants into a south or eastern window. And um, with a 60 watt grow light, this is a 60 watt grow light, you can buy it any place bulbs are sold, and it will be on from 3 to 11 p.m. When the seedlings have two full leaves, that's when you will transplant them to their work shoes. Clay pots are work shoes. Tamp them down real good. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna feed them on a regular basis using a quarter of a teaspoon of fish emulsion, two drops of liquid dish soap, one drop of whiskey, and a quart of water. And then you're gonna treat them just like a house plant and your vegetable plants are off and roaring and waiting to grow as soon as they can get outdoors. have a great vegetable garden unless you go out and prepare the soil and prepare it right. Whether it's containers, raised garden, or an in-the-ground garden, you have to prepare the soil. And you will always begin with one basic mixture, and that's going to be one-third sand. Sand lets uh, water run through soil easier. One-third clay loam. Clay loam slows it up if it is sand. And one-third pro mix. Professional mix is a must. It's non-contaminated soil. It lets the plants get off to a good start. It has been rendered to be proper. Now, there, when you do this, you've got to make things right for it, and they've got to have all of the basic fundamentals they need. Now, for containers, there will be no food added to the mixture, and the reason is because it's in a confined uh, area, and it would burn the plants. So here we're going to use, for each peck of mix we do, we're going to put a quarter of a cup of Epsom salts a quarter of a cup of coffee grounds. Coffee grounds are a soil conditioner, spread the soil apart. Epsom salts deepens the color, thickens the petal, and increases root structure. And four eggshells, I want them dried in the microwave or in the oven, crushed real fine, and that's, and that's calcium. Mix all of that together and mix it into the mixture, put it into the pot, and they're off and growing. For raised beds, for each 50 square feet of growing surface, I want you to add two pounds of lime, five pounds of garden food, that feeds them, lime neutralizes and brings the acidity down, and a quarter of a pound of Epsom salt, steepens the color, thickens the petal, and increases root structure. Mix that into the soil really, really well, and then they're off and growing. Now, for in the ground gardens, that's a big surface. That can be uh, uh, 10 by 30, 10 by 40, 10 by 50, but for each 100 square feet of garden surface, I want you to put 25 pounds of fertilizer, one pound of sugar, which feeds the bacteria, which releases the food uh, in a form that the plants can eat, and a half a pound 
of Epsom salts, deepens the color, thickens the petal, and increases root structure. If you prepare the soil properly, no matter which form it's in, whether it's a raised garden, whether it's a container garden, or it's an in-the-ground garden, they're going to be off and growing, and you're going to have a bountiful harvest like you've never seen before. Now I'm going to go off and give them a little bite to eat.